Greetings, brothers and sisters. I turned on CNN yesterday, I think it was, and it was maybe at lunchtime. I'm not sure. But this guy was on, and they were saying this. Just in, another new case of COVID in the Biden administration. We've just learned Secretary of Agriculture Tom Vilsack has tested positive. This comes after dozens of other people in the Biden administration have tested positive. Arlette Sines joins me now from the White House. Arlette. Did you just say her name was Arlette Sines? <laughs> what are we doing here, CNN? <laughs> are you guys just giving up? Are you, are you guys not even trying anymore? Uh, the president tested negative yesterday, but the White House is saying even if he tests positive, uh, he'll still be able to carry out his job. Oh, so COVID's going to make him do his job better or it's going to reverse his um, dementia? Because he can't even do his job now, bro. <laughs> like, what are they talking about? He's not capable of getting through a speech without drooling on himself or worse, right? And so <laughs> if he gets COVID... He's certainly not going to be able to do his job. Um, but what's going on? Is this outbreak changing the protocols there? Uh, are the masks going back on? Uh, what can you tell us? Well, Jim, what we have seen is a change in how the White House is talking about the possibility of President Biden potentially contracting COVID-19 at some point. Yesterday, they were openly saying that it's very possible the president could have a, a positive test for COVID. As is, as is expected, Arlette signs is annoying. <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. <laughs> but anyways, you know, Jojo Magoo should not make it through COVID unless they have some sort of medicine they're not giving everybody else, right? I mean, you know, if he gets COVID, of course, he's he's been boosted a couple of times, so he should be, he should get a less severe version of COVID, you know, because of the boosters. I mean, but even with that, even with that protection, he is probably, you know, in the high risk category since he's a walking corpse now. And they don't really, I mean, they're not happy about Kamala, right? So in September, right before the election, Jojo was starting to cough and he was definitely showing signs of, um, you know, going, going south. And I thought they were going to say he had COVID and just replace him with Cuomo's or something, but I didn't do that. I was pretty surprised they didn't. But then I realized that people just don't care, right? Or have no power to do anything and have just accepted this level of competence in their executive position, right? So, <laughs> and with Kamala, they don't win a lot with Kamala. And people don't like her and she's, you know, she's got a gaffe coming up. I mean, she just doesn't get it. She's totally clueless and she doesn't even have dementia. So, you know, they don't even have an excuse for her. If they ran Kamala instead of JoJo, there's no chance that she would have won. Like, she wouldn't even have come close because nobody likes it, right? Uh, at some point in the future. Now, this comes as the administration's uh, COVID protocols have come into focus following that recent string of positive tests among a few cabinet officials, as well as lawmakers and other officials uh, with ties to the White House. Most recently, as you noted, the Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack announced today that he has tested positive for COVID-19 and is experiencing minor, uh, mild symptoms. Now, Vice President Kamala Harris... How does um, COVID or Omicron, Omicron affect ghouls? Because Tom Vilsack, <laughs> CNN's, not, CNN's not even trying to, to give um, human-looking photos. They're just going full ghoul, right? They've just given up. <laughs> CNN's just backing it in was a close contact of Jamal Simmons, her communications director, who tested positive. But so far, the White House has said that each of these people who've contracted COVID were not a close contact of President Biden, even though he has attended. Look at this gathering of ghouls. It's like a coven of ghouls, right? <laughs> it's over and over the decrepit Mr. Burns, right? Deliverance boy. And so <laughs> Nancy blows, he's got a big red circle around <laughs> Nancy's got COVID. They've targeted her. In some events uh, with people who eventually tested positive. If you take a look at this photo of an event the president was at uh, a little bit earlier in the week, he's standing next to two people who tested positive for COVID, including House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Uh, the White House is pointing to those CDC guidelines saying that um, 
close contacts are essentially people who spend a cumulative 15 minutes uh, in close proximity to one another. But for the time being, uh, there haven't been major changes to the COVID protocols here at the White House. They do say that they take additional steps to try to keep the president protected. That includes changing his diaper more frequently and <laughs> hooking him up to a respirator so he can <laughs> get his oxygen levels up to human-like standards. Uh, testing for those who will be close to the president as well as social distancing when possible. The president himself tested negative for COVID-19 yesterday. Jim. All right. I remember a different uh, COVID super spreader event for a different Supreme Court justice. Uh, it seems that this is a, a problem. And so he's talking about Trump and Kavanaugh, and they were savage on Trump, right? Super spreader. They were a super spreader event. And yet um, they're giving these guys a pass, and they've had the same results, right? In a, you know, a time when COVID is, I mean, nearly, not nearly what it once was, right? The cases are down. Everything's moved on from it. And they had a super spreader event, right? <laughs> this guy. But, <laughs> but they're giving the Biden administration a complete pass. Anytime you get a lot of people together over there at the White House in, in close company with one another. Uh, all right. Glad they're taking more precautions. Arlette signs. Thank you very much. Thanks, Arlette. Go sign something for us, right? Um, <laughs> completely different tone here than what, you know, they experienced with Trump in this super spreader event, right? Um, this is CNN. All right. Um, okay. So I got a bunch more things to get to here. Um, this is, you know, no particular order. Sean Wayans, I've been sent this so many times, so I'm finally just going to cover it. Um, Sean Wayans is doing an impression of Chris Rock. And he had made fun of Puff Daddy. Thank you very much. Oh, no, Puffy, not so Puff Daddy walks on stage and slaps him. It's not really Puff Daddy, but you know. Puffy, not you get the idea. Oh, no, Britney Spears comes up and kicks him. And then all these other, you know, various um, uh, famous people he was making fun of are beating the crap out of him. You know, predictive programming, maybe, who knows. Camila Cabello, um, I don't think I'm saying that right, is in a uh, video called Psych Psycho Freak, and it's featuring Willow. This is Willow Smith, who has been auto-tuned because she can't sing. She's inverted, she's on the ceiling, and then she's doing her Willow stuff. She's doing her Willow singing with, she needs a lot of auto-tuning. Auto and then she gets on the ceiling that way. And then she inverts herself going upside down right after the big parental slap. So it starts off here. Feeling like a psycho freak, freak, freak. She's feeling like a psycho freak. Another one of these videos that's really dark. But Willow has, um, you can see that she's wearing a spiked SM SNM collar there, you know. And she's, um, you know, Willow. <laughs> she just goes by Willow now. No Smith, just Willow. And then Camila Caballo goes upside down, goes up the... She goes... Um, she's hanging from the ceiling there, and she goes upside down. There's a lot of inversion here. Then Willow's on the ceiling, inverted with her spiked collar. Doing this. Bouncing around over there. And that's Willow. They're getting as much out of the inversion as they possibly can there. She's upside down the ceiling. Um, Ariana Grande did something like this as well. You know, in, in Satanism, they invert everything. Here they are together, and they're on the ceiling there. Um, Willow's getting crazy. <laughs> there she is, Willow. There goes Willow. There she is again, right? A lot of weird stuff with Willow and, um, you know. <laughs> the Smith family going through some hard times. There she is, and they have these red chairs and everything as she's inverted. All right, so that's Willow. Kamala Harris said something funny here. The governor and I, and we were all um, doing a tour of the library here and um, talking about the significance of the passage of time. Significance of the passage of time. Time is passing us by, and it's significant. 
right? The significance of the passage of time. Say it again in case you didn't hear it the first time. So when it's Kamala two times. When you think about it, there is great significance to the passage of time in terms of what we need to do to lay these wires, what we need to do to create these jobs. And there is such... <laughs> Wait, there's, you know, you know, it's going to take time to do all that stuff. So we, we got to get work done in that time period. There is such great significance to the passage of time when we think about a day in the life of our children. <laughs> yeah, that's the significance is it's a day. <laughs> in the day of a life of our child, there's so much significance in the passage of time for that period that's like 24 hours and you know some people call it a day like i just called it a day she really thought she rocked it right at the end here <laughs> like she was rocking it i think i nailed that one and so that's why they're keeping jojo but go alive recession shock bank bank of america is the latest major institution to deliver a grim warning for the future talk of looming reception is rampant around the globe and now a major U.S. bank has issued its own dire forecast for the global economy. It's been over a month since Russia invaded the Ukraine, leading to an unforeseen and prolonged fallout for the global economy. Well, let's get to the Bank of America. Here it goes. Thursday, Bank of America analysts warned that inflation always precedes recession and the surging, patient, surging prices make a recession shock very likely. This is, you know, they always come in light because it's way worse than that, right? <laughs> Buck star Giannis Antetokounmpo has money in 50, 50 different bank accounts. I can only pronounce that because I've heard his name like hundreds of times. Um, it says here he has, um, he said that he has opened bank accounts with 50 different banks, each one of them holding $250,000. His boss, team owner, Mark Larcy told Bloomberg News, well, he's smart. He's trying to diversify and see that, you know, some of these banks, at least some of them won't fail, but, um, you know, I think all of them will. <laughs> so this is Jussie Smollett's official Instagram page. I'm not sure if somebody sent me this or um, I saw this on, like, New York Post or something. He's channeling these thoughts the best way he knows how. Like they help me. Not solving a crime, taking out the LMS. So he's still claiming to be innocent. I guess there's some fans out there that think he is. I don't, I don't know how, but it's true. Race and trans and homophobia that start taking lives, but turn around and act like I'm the one that killed the strides. They turn around acting like he's the one that killed the strides. You know, when he tried to fake a personal attack and insert himself into the narrative that pretty much everybody saw through within days. Even people like Kamala who backed him at first and then had to bail on it. I can't be mad. Take my ego out. Some people search it for fame. Some people chasing that cloud. Yeah, that's not what happened here. You got caught. Like, <laughs> there was checks to, to these guys who were involved and, you know, they didn't commit a hate crime against you, your friends, that you paid to do it, right? Just remember this. This ain't that situation. You think I'm stupid enough to keep my reputation. See, that's the thing you say when people don't have any proof and it's like a he said, she said type of thing, right? You know, there's evidence. You're a convicted felon, right? This is the kind of thing that you say when people think you might have done something. We know you did this, right? <laughs> like, pretty much everybody knows, and who knows anything about this, knows that you did it. <laughs> well, you think I'm stupid enough to do something this stupid? <laughs> do you think I'd be stupid enough to be as stupid as I would be this stupid to do something this stupid that would destroy my life? Well, yeah, you know, that's what we all thought. But I mean, like, you know, the evidence is overwhelming, right? We have evidence now. There's like a ton of evidence. <laughs> it's not like this is just, oh, I'm being accused of something. I don't know where this is coming from. You think I'm that stupid to do something this stupid? <laughs> when we first heard about the story didn't sound believable. The story sounded unbelievable, but some people fell for it because they were pre-inclined to believe you, right? And then other people, it was like, all right, we don't have any proof yet, but it sounds fishy. But then the proof came in. He had two friends, the Osendario brothers, doing the hate crime. 
they're the ones who did it, right? There was videotape of an attack where Jesse Smollett was fighting and ended up being two of his friends. And so what was their motivation other than the check for $5,000 that, you know, he gave to them, right, <laughs> days before? And they, you know, put a noose around his neck and doused him with gas. And he had a Subway sandwich. He went home. He was eating a Subway sandwich, and the cops came. He still had the noose on. He was still wearing clothes that were doused in gas and bleach, right? And the cops were like, this guy's, it's the story doesn't add up, right? You know, like the first thing he would go was take off the noose and, you know, get new clothes on. Then you could just show him the clothes, but he, he kept it on. You know, like he just, you know. It was, he did it. Like it was, it was a planned thing. You know, it, it was like two o'clock in the morning and no, and the guys were, he said that they were targeting him specifically. Like these, these guys in Chicago of all places too. It's not like he was in some hotbed of, you know, where hate crimes are happening like this and that they went after him personally. And they said things about, you know, him and his role on the show because all racists watched that show Empire, right? Like, you know, just stupid. And so he got caught. It's proven. He's convicted, you know, and he, I mean, they didn't even want to go after him, but he just was such a, a douche about everything that they went after him and convicted him, right? And so, you know, he did it. Like, everyone knows it, but a few of his fans, which I'll get to in just a moment. And so the question of whether he's stupid enough to do this or not is yes, he is. Like, he you know, this is epically stupid because he's ruined his career. He's burned bridges in the black community and the gay community simultaneously by undermining, you know, all hate crimes and staging a hate crime. And it's just something that he's never going to recover from. And he's kind of a national joke. And so there's no future for him. <laughs> like, you do something this stupid and this heinous, I mean, this is like, think how bad Will Smith's slap of Chris Rock is, right? And that's all fake, but whatever. You know, the punishment for that is 10 years banned from um, the Academy. Like, this is a real crime. He's being convicted, and he's, you know, he's dead. He's not going, He's his career's over. So he can't come out, and even if he owns up to it and begs for mercy and forgiveness, no one's ever going to forgive him for this. I mean, he's not going to get a second chance. And so he has to pretend, right? But this is just a silly argument. Like, this is the argument you make when there isn't a mountain of evidence against you, you know, real evidence, right? Like, this is why you're trying to convince them. Why would be so? Why would somebody be this stupid? I don't know. Why? Why would you be this? Like, why did you do this? Right? It makes no sense. Just simply too look like a victim, like it's something fun. I better look at someone else. You got the wrong one. You got the wrong one. But I want to thank y'all. No, I still got you. It's for the people who kept it real, kept it true. Like, let me phrase that, cuz the narrative they play, I really overstand the reason why y'all felt betrayed. Yeah, well, it's not that we feel betrayed. Like, you just, you know, it's like the stupidity of it, which was, you know, very enjoyable for some of us. Instead of sharing shade in rooms and up on CNN. Boom. CNN. Thunder's mad loud. Still, I'm pushing through the clouds. All I ever really want. See, what he did was unforgivable, right? Let's say this is all real. No, you know, he did this on his own. Like he just decided, hey, I want to be a victim of a hate crime, right? Because when he hired his buddies who ratted him out, like we have witnesses, right? You know, these guys have a check in which he paid them $5,000 to dress up and pretend to execute a hate crime against him. So he faked a hate crime, right? And so... Whatever his fantasy was, whatever he thought he was going to get out of it, whatever, you know, these celebrities and politicians are always staging things to make themselves look good, right? For whatever way that he fantasized that this was going to be a good thing, there was no voice of reason in him to say, hey, you know, this could go south, right? <laughs> so he paid these guys, you know, this is what he's been convicted of, right? He paid these guys to stage and fake a hate crime at a time when Black Lives Matter was a huge thing, it was like sweeping across the country. And so this was, you know, all a part of that, right? Trump was president. There was a big uh, liberal and gay community and, you know, black community resistance to all of that, right? A growing resistance. And so he hired these two guys 
and he went to a subway at like four in the morning and, you know, it was dead of winter, you know, Chicago's cold place, right? You know, it's really, you know, the windy city, right? So he's going out in the middle of the night to go into like a 24 hour open subway sandwich shop, right? And these guys, these hate crime doers are just lurking there outside in front of cameras because it happened, you know, in front of some cameras. And then he called the police and he was somebody who was famous. And so as soon as he called the police and there was, you know, film and all this stuff and, you know, this was released as he, maybe he had his, somebody called the, called the press themselves. Who knows how he did that. But the national press was involved and people like Kamala Harris were commenting, right? During the presidential election and, you know, there's lots of tensions between the Democrats and Republicans and the various groups, you know, right? And so, like, think about all this. In a very liberal city, right, where, you know, there isn't a lot of hate crimes this way, in the middle of the night, and he paid a couple of guys who cracked, like, almost immediately as they were questioned by police. And he sent them on a a plane trip, like, you know... (laughs) Remember, he sent them to like Africa or something. And so they were <laughs> they were supposed to lay low. And so there was just a pile of evidence. The cops didn't believe him right away, right? I mean, he just didn't execute this in any way that was, um, you know, going to be successful. That he would pull this off, this hoax. And so, you know, almost immediately there was doubt in his story and his story started to crumble. And the story was that these people who knew him, right, who called him by his name and said, you're that guy on that Empire show, right? These, you know, these hate mongers walking around the streets of Chicago at four o'clock in the morning, prowling by a subway with a can of gas, a bottle of bleach and a noose, right? (laughs) And that they were going to assault this guy in the street. I mean, you know, like, (laughs) these are the only, these are the kind of criminals that exist in your fantasy when you're you know, wanting to be a superhero and you're pretending to pummel them in some B movie, you know, they don't exist in reality. I mean, you know, criminals aren't going to go out four o'clock at night. You know, how much hate do they have in them, right? (laughs) You know, on the streets of Chicago, which is, you know, not such a a safe and friendly place for them, right? Carrying a noose and these things around. And so the whole thing just crumbled. It was, it was, had no chance of success. And so his decision making in doing this, because now all the right wing people, all the people who are not on his side will say, oh, you're pulling another Jesse Smollett. When you pose something, you fake something, you hoax something, you're crying wolf, right? And so, you know, real height crimes and things that, I mean, especially for these two communities, I mean, he's done a disservice to them. And so he ain't working again, right? They ain't forgiven him, you know? And so he's, there's nothing he can do. I mean, he can own up to it, right? But that's not going to do anything. So, I mean, his best case scenario is to keep on, you know, saying that he's innocent because he's got a few fans left, right? Or at least some bots that are leaving positive comments on his Instagram page. Okay, so this person hearts. This person flames. This person, thank thank you, God love you, Jussie. Spoken, handled, and saying like a true king. Thank you, God. Thank you, we are, we are all... We are all in your glory again. Um, so there isn't any pushback, which leads to be to believe that Jussie's um, censoring his comments. <laughs> so then they had upward lightning strikes in, in uh, Kansas, in uh, Wichita, Kansas. You see all the lightning going up here. So this is lightning that's coming from the ground and going up to the clouds, right? And, you know... Like, that's something, right? I mean, that's something new. And this is apparently happening a lot more, which could indicate that we're in for electromagnetic uh, pole shifting, right? This is from the New York Post. This is a different view of someone from their car. Um, So this is a phenomena called upward lightning. It's kind of interesting. It looks cool. And... There could be a disturbance in the magnetic field, like there could be some, you know, the magnetic poles are shifting or something like that that's causing this. And if there's more and more of this and then you start seeing the aurora borealis in places that you never saw it before, then it's time to prepare for the magnetic field shifting, which may or may not be happening, but 
it is predicted in the whispers of the brighter world. So that's something that I believe is going to happen. It's been, you know, overdue. It happens every 200,000 years. And it's like been something like 250, 60,000 years since the last time it's happened. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I was making that video. I'd finished about half of it. I was going to see if anything else happened. I was going to include it today. I also wanted to talk about the Pam and Tommy Lee show on Hulu, which my wife and I just watched. It's kind of weird. Um, uh, anyways, um, I don't know if I'll do that here, but that was my plan yesterday. And then last night, a spectacular comment came in. I mean, I've been, you know, happy about it, like waiting to do this, video, <laughs> this part of the video all morning. So this is a comment that was generated when a person who doesn't know what this channel is about and doesn't understand the truth community found my Will Smith has been a fraud for his entire career, the full compilation. I have to add the word career. It isn't there for some reason. Um, possibly dyslexia is the reason. <laughs> but I didn't put the word career in. But anyway, it should be there in the title. And so this was a compilation about how there are members of the gay community in Hollywood and Hollywood itself who have reported over and over again, you know, the Hollywood gossip rags, Hollywood Insider, maybe Entertainment Tonight, some of these other things, New York Post, you know, page six, these types of publications that have speculated that Will Smith is a gay man or bisexual man or something, that he is hiding something. Of course, Alexis Arquette, you know, has said this. I mean, that's only part of the fraud, right? Because Will Smith himself has you know, said, which I covered in the compilation, that it is a, you know, it is a, he's a creation. He's a, he's a character, a carefully constructed character that doesn't represent him at all that hides the coward. He's, that's what he said. Those were his words, you know, not verbatim, but that's what he said, basically. And he used the word coward, that he's hiding the coward within. But anyways, most of you guys have watched some of my Will Smith videos over the years and recently. And probably seen the compilation. And the compilation, I mean, I've added to it since then. When this story sort of blows over, I'll put up a new compilation with more. It's like longer now, right? More comprehensive. <laughs> but anyways, this person, um, you know, I don't get many normies or sheeple or, you know, people who aren't in the truth community anymore. Because YouTube algorithms work differently than they did years ago. I used to get lots of normies. And that's where a lot of the comment videos came from was sort of making fun of normies when they, um, you know, came to the channel. There was one time where um, there is a uh, there's a character named Bill Cipher, I believe, from um, some cartoon. And I don't care. Don't tell me. Don't need to know. But it was a cartoon where this character, Bill Cipher, was literally the capstone of the pyramid. You couldn't get any more Illuminati than this, right? A cartoon character who was the capstone of the pyramid with eyes and limbs, right, walking around. And I did a video on it. And there was a fan club for the show, I guess many. And they started to make fun of me. And one of my viewers saw it and told me. It was like in real time. And so I went over to the fan club and I was, you know, finding their comments about me. And, you know, I was, um, <laughs> it was, it was wonderful. <laughs> I think I was making fun of them for being possible virgins, right? <laughs> and other things. And they, um, then they got a hold of that video and they were like, one of them wrote a comment, we got to stop talking. He found us. <laughs> when they wrote, he found us, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so uh, that was like, you know, those were the days when I got a lot of normies and like so-called sheeple that came to my channel. But it doesn't happen anymore. But anyways, you know, I mean, I'm giving this a long introduction because it's worth it. At least the beginning. I didn't even read the full comment because it was just I'm like savoring it for today. <laughs> and so um, the person... Starts off, I had to take three screenshots to get it all in. So this is multiple paragraphs. And the person writes, 
20 minutes and 44 seconds in. So it's an hour long video. Two, 20 minutes and 44 seconds into this. And I can't take any more of this bull stuff. They said bull stuff. That's not me. They can't take any more of this bull stuff that I'm laying down in this video. People who want to get people to view their videos, i.e. clickbait, portraying what is not true. And so um, this person saying that about my video, that that's why I made this video, about stuff that's not true. The Irishman, uh, the Irishman, I don't think that was just, I, I, do, I do think that was just Will playing around. Well, you're not saying this isn't untrue, right? Um, this is the bull stuff. The Irish man, I do think, was just was Will just playing around when the woman got up in front of him, which extended the comedy, entertaining everyone. If I was Will, I would not want to repeat because this would really get taken out of context real quick <laughs> and go bad just as quick. So I would not have gone along, just go into comic mentality. So again, not very articulated very well. When I was showing a video of Will with my mother, the scene came up where the guy was massaging. All right, so let's go with the, um, so that's the first part. So he's talking about Graham Norton here. And I'm going to have to switch um, from the microphone to, um, from doing a voiceover to my other app here. So the Irish guy that this commenter is referring to, because of all the bull stuff I was laying down, Norton is uh, Graham Norton. And I searched Graham Norton, and one of the first things that came up was partner, because he is an openly gay man. Norton is openly gay. Norton dated Christian Sieber, who performs as the drag queen Tina Burner, I guess on this show with RuPaul. He split up with his partner of two years, Trevor Patterson, in 2013, and broke up with his subsequent partner, partner Andrew Smith, in 2015. And so this is... Um, Tina Burner here, and Graham Norton, and here they are as a couple of these two guys, right? So Graham Norton is an openly gay guy who dated someone who dresses up in women's clothing. You know who else dresses up in women's clothing? Professionally, Will Smith, right? This is Will Smith in the Wild Wild West show, and I document this also as well in the video. So let's go into the clip. So he's on the Graham Norton show. And I want to say that um, an Irish woman sent me this clip, right? I've seen some of these Graham Norton clips. Once you watch one, YouTube starts recommending whatever it is, right? And so over the years, once in a while, I see something. I've covered some, another clip with Will Smith, and then some other things that I've covered here that, you know, that feed into the narratives that we talk about. Um, but an Irish woman sent me this, and she, you know, I mean, most people seeing this, think is pretty weird and so what happens here let's just go play my video here you know will smith let's go back here so um he is in behind oh, yeah. you oh, oh yeah, man absolutely. okay so he starts this guy reaches down to bend over and will is eyeing his buttocks and he decides well it's like good production see. and then we've it's got like, can you there's <laughs> words up there yes okay you all say i'm gonna so let me stop it there right so um, what this woman is defending as normal behavior is this, what she's thinking is a heterosexual man is sticking his finger somewhere near or in the anus of a gay man, right? An openly gay man that this guy bends down in front of Will Smith and Will Smith's idea of just being funny or playing around as she put it, right? is going to stick his finger in his anus because that's what happens. That's, you know, that's what people do. Let me go back to the video here. I do that. He decides to do that back there. Big giant cursor nose, colossal cursor. Oh, 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 oh. And then they have a good laugh. And so when I first posted this, I didn't watch. And so eventually Helen Marin gets up and Will Smith wants no part of doing it to her, right? And so... Um, he wants no part of doing it to her because she presents herself to have the same thing. And that's what the woman was referring to, right? 
So this is what this person, this commenter, is trying to normalize here, that behavior. And so she's saying here, um, the Irish man, I do not think that was Will. I, that Irish man, I do think that was Will playing around. Well, he certainly was playing around, but that's an odd behavior, trying to normalize something here, right? You're trying to say something's normal when it clearly isn't. <laughs> you know, That's not normal behavior. Because what do you think it is, right? Most people don't want their anus area touched right? <laughs> by a stranger. Like that's an assault, right? That's some sort of predatory behavior. That when somebody, especially somebody you don't know that well, but even if you do, again, this is not your, you know, your lover or somebody. This is more or less a stranger to you. Like this isn't somebody's like a good friend. They're not good friends. They, you know, probably just met. This might be the first time they even met, right? So who, you know, maybe he's been on a show a couple times, whatever it is, right? They don't know each other. They don't hang out. And even if they did, it's offensive. And so this is the kind of thing that gets you sent to the HR, right? I mean, when people have, you know, touch that part of somebody else's body, right? And what this commenter is saying, Will's just playing around, that's perfectly normal behavior. Well, what the behavior we're seeing here is a gay man, an openly gay man, bending over and, you know, being in front of Will Smith, who is supposed to be a heterosexual man who's married, right? And Will Smith decides, as a straight man, to probe his anal region, right? And, you know, why? Is that just playing around? I mean, again, if you think about the dynamics here, because Graham Norton would probably be open to sexual relationship, sexual relations with Will Smith. So this would be considered flirting, right? Or just, I mean, there's all kinds of offensive. I mean, there's all kinds of ways this could be taken, right? And in the history of, like, all the heterosexual men that I know, I don't know one of them that would ever grab another man's ass like this or do whatever it is, right? Like, <laughs> what do you, like, how do you, know? like, yeah, that's what our football coach told us. It's just, you know, if a gay man bends in front, bends down in front of you as a heterosexual man, it's just courteous to probe his anal area, right? Like, you're trying to normalize something. He's not even drunk, right? Like, this is something where, um, you know, it's on television and all of it, right? I mean, it, well, you know, if you watch it, Graham Norton jumps up and is quite um, shocked at the, you know, because it's, <laughs> he, he like, you know, jumps back and springs into action, right? So <laughs> this is not stuff that is done. Like, I, I don't know anybody else, any circumstance, gay man, straight man, anybody that would do this, right? And, you know, go up to a stranger and do this. Um, you know, any sort of dynamics, right? Anybody would think that this is a, you know, sort of an offensive act to do. Like you're you're in that kind of a, they have that kind of a friendship where, you know, this is your goose in it, whatever it is, right? I think it's called goosing somebody. And again, I don't care. Like I don't, you know, I don't have some stake in Will Smith being a closeted homosexual. And I'm not, you know, like I started covering Will Smith in 2014 and 15, when I realized that all these celebrities, you know, they had this fake brand and it was all just, you know, I covered him because I covered Tom Hanks, who had the nice guy brand. And I thought of Will Smith and Ellen as two other people who had the nice guy brand that were, you know, were really trusted by, you know, people. I mean, in terms of the, you know, the fan base and, you know, people follow celebrity culture and just every way. And they were known as good people, nice people, people you could trust. And I did a thing on Tom Hanks, and then I thought about Will Smith. And of course, Will Smith with Madam Expiration Date, someone who des desperately wants to stay relevant, that came when he had his own YouTube channel. Um, but Will Smith is, you know, more fraudulent in a, you know, a town and a business that's filled with frauds. Will Smith is the biggest fraud, like one of the biggest frauds. And he's so desperate for attention, but I don't care. Like, I don't, you know, if he's gay or straight, no, it doesn't matter to me. Like, he, you know, he doesn't owe me an apology, right? I just document the fraudulent nature of Hollywood, right? I don't, you know, this is coming from, uh, you know, the information came from gay people, like from Hollywood and gay people. The rumors came from Hollywood. They didn't come from the truth community. 
they didn't come from me. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't know. I didn't even think this out. I didn't, you know, I just thought Will Smith was whatever Will Smith thought he was. I didn't really care or think about him. He was in some movies, you know, slightly entertaining. I didn't, you know, wasn't angry at him or didn't dislike him. But then when I realized what a fraud he was, all this information was there, including Alexis Arquette's comment about him and Jada having a beard marriage, right? So, like, there's people inside Hollywood and Wild Wild West star. Um, well, anyway, I didn't read the whole comment. Maybe that'll come back around. But for me, I don't care. I'm not invested in this view. You know, the evidence is kind of overwhelming, whether it's put there intentionally or not. And again, like, I can understand why Will Smith wouldn't be able to come out in the beginning of his career because his career would have ended. I could see the pressure there. I could see the prejudice. I could see why he felt like he had to keep his sexuality a secret, you know, to be a movie star, to be someone who was accept, uh, accepted in the rap com- rap community for whatever reason, right? And so I could see why he lied. You know, I'm not saying he should have or not, you know, but you're you're betraying yourself when you create false images and you pretend to be something you're not. But the problem with Will Smith and Jada is they've pushed their marriage out and their family out. Like they just, you know, they're not doing it in some sort of slick way. And then it's come out that their marriage is a complete sham, right? Let's get back to the comment because that's what we're doing here. Okay, I got to find it here. Um, All right, where's my, I got to find my place here. Um, Taken out of context, uh, so I would too not have gone along and just, Go into the comic mentality. When I was showing a quick, uh, when I was showing a video of Will with my mother, the scene came up where the guy was massaging Will's shoulders. The guy is Jada uh, Pinkett Smith's brother, by the way, who's massaging Will uh, Smith's shoulders in that. So that's, you know, very odd as well. Will says, only a man knows what a man needs. My mother became instantly angered It's as as if Will insulted her. (laughs) So she must have been watching Will's uh, YouTube channel. And um, (laughs) I responded, he's right. Just as a man knows what a man needs, so it is a woman knows what a woman needs. Each gender can understand and know things to a certain point, what the other gender needs, needs, etc., but you cannot know, understand, it's like, it's to know each gender. So this is not by any means an omission that Will is gay. <laughs> this person's really into this. This, this person is um, really, uh, <laughs> really invested in this. So I'm not going to show that clip, but uh, Jada has this look on her face and, you know, it's just one of many, I mean, I give examples of Will Smith saying stuff like this when he was, you know, interviewed and he said, Alex probed me. I mean, you've seen the compilation probably, but he says things like that over and over again, which clearly are in some way, you know, I mean, then he was, you know, acting like a gay man on uh, Arsenio. I mean, it's just something, you know, he's into those types of you know, they're jokes, but are they really jokes, right? Why Why those things? I mean, it's a pattern of behavior here, you know. I mean, <laughs> the thing about this comment is that, you know, Will Smith either is or he isn't, right? You know, and I, I mean, the evidence is there. Like, I'm just presenting the evidence. It could be something else. He could be, you know, it could be part of his brand. It could be something, I don't know. Like, I don't know what, you know, but there's just a lot of it, right? His marriage is a sham. You know it's marriage is fake. And then, you know, all these other things, right? Um, you know, there's just you know, all this stuff to do with it. It isn't like just one thing. And there's a pattern of behavior. But this person is completely invested in this, you know, narrative. And then the person says, Will and his son, Jaden, any mature adult knows one of the most fun, playful interactions with your kids is doing something that will embarrass them. Like being at the school bus stop wearing a costume for all the kids on the bus to see. <laughs> You're as a parent are going to put on a costume to embarrass your kid. Like <laughs> calling out for your kid so there's no mistaking who the parent is there for. 
Um, well, I guess maybe that's something you would do. Thus, Will acting like he wanted to kiss his son and got that very well instantly, my thoughts were, of how great a dad Will is showing such playfulness by forcing his kid to kiss him on the mouth. He's kissed his son, I think, four times that I've seen. Some of the video, you know, I don't have the video anymore and I haven't, you know, searched for it. There are four times on camera. There was on the Ellen show where he tried to. You know, his kid's trying to run away from him. And Will's trying to force his mouth on his son's mouth. He's making out with his son, right? I mean, he did it in, uh, you know, they made that movie together, whatever it's called. I don't, you know, whatever. Don't care. Don't tell me. Don't need to know. Um, but he, um, you know, he um, did it on that, that there was like a, you know, a press kind of thing. He was inter- They were interviewing them and he kissed him on the mouth there. You know, and Jaden is pushing him away from it. It's a weird behavior. I don't know any adult man that kissed his son on the lips, right? On the mouth, as Will Smith calls it. There's another time when Jaden was younger, after they'd done their, you know, another movie. And then I can't, I can't remember the fourth time I saw it. But those were just times in public. Jaden says he does it all the time. And then also his other son, Trey, he does it with him. He doesn't do it with Willow, but he does it with his sons. He kisses them on the mouth. Like I've never heard of any father doing that, right? I mean, him embarrassing his son, you know, it's a controlling behavior. He embarrasses his family and his kids, and that's a controlling behavior. It's like a dominant behavior. It's not playful. It's not being a good dad, right? And so, thus Will acting like he wanted to kiss his son, I got the, I got that very well. Instantly, my thoughts were, of how great a dad will is showing such playfulness. And Jaden is laughing, having fun too. He's running for his life. Like, you know, you can see the video. <laughs> He's trying to go over the couch to get away from his dad. He's trying to kiss him on the mouth. And, you know, it's not a normal behavior. And it's, you know, he, and he also, there's another clip I show where he's got Jaden in some sort of a, like, sleeper hold, like a headlock. And he says, do you feel loved? I mean, he's, you know, physically dominating and, you know. And then, um, you know, muscling in on Jaden's hit uh, rap song. I mean, it's just all this form of dominance and, you know, forcing himself on his family and, and you know, everything else. And so, you know, let's get back to the comment here. But this is a person being in denial, right? And so... You won't get me to believe that this is Will sh- trying to show the evil rulers he was turning his son for whatever their narrative may be. Um, I don't know what that even means, but I'm not trying to get you to believe anything, right? <laughs> I'm just presenting the evidence. So we have documented here this person's admitting to very odd behaviors and trying to normalize them. One in w- which Will, you know, probes on TV, puts his hand in and around a stranger's anus region, um, goosism, and again, you know, a, a gay man that Will, Will Smith is, I don't know, flirting with, I don't know what that you would call this behavior. Um, and then he's making out with his sons, which both of his sons have talked about him doing, right? That Will Smith likes to kiss his sons on the lips, and these are teenage, you know, I mean, into their 20s now, I mean, this is something he was doing in their teenage years. It wasn't like they were little kids, which would still be weird. But this is, you know, as they get older and 12, and on camera in front of people. Like it's, I mean, not that it's better in private, but again, you know, it's humiliating for them. And it's not a cool behavior. And then the person says, these days with all the, what evil men conceive in the darkness, I will bring into light shouting from the mountaintops. People are turning around turning around what should not just so they can get views and make money. Um, (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's there's financial incentive for me to make these videos. But the evidence is there, right? It's weird behavior. Like it's stuff, you know, you know, what would stop it is if Will didn't make out with his son or grab men's buttockses or whatever. (laughs) Like, you know, like I'm not the one acting and behaving this way, right? This is Will Smith being a very strange person. And then, you know, lying and creating a sham marriage and pretending it's great when it isn't, right? So this is all, you know, on him. Like, this is him feeding into, you know, he's providing the material. 
if he didn't do any of these things, if he had a healthy marriage and he wasn't trying to, you know, I mean, every second pimp out his family as a, a way to get attention and, you know, create his own YouTube channel to get more attention and lie about everything and misrepresent himself, which he admitted to. Like this person's arguing that Will's somehow genuine and sincere when he himself said it's a carefully creative character, whatever he called it. I mean, I covered that in the video itself. People are turned around what should not just be they get views and make money. You are trying to take things out of context for your own narrative. Well, that's what you're doing here, right? Like you're trying to, you know, I mean, you're giving your interpretation that Will was being a good dad for making out with his son and he was, you know, probing a man's, you know, buttocks region because he's just a fun com comedic guy. And he said only a man knows what a man needs because that's just how it is because women and men could never figure out what the other sex needs just because they're not the same sex because that's just how it works. They, you know, they could never figure out what somebody else might need, right? <laughs> it's exactly as the saying goes, if crazy is all you're looking for, then crazy is all you will see. <laughs> I like this is all new to me. I did I you know, I only read a little bit of the first part and I'm like, oh and I saw how long this comment is. I'm like, oh my god, this is this is wonderful. There's a whole lot of this going on any anymore. There is a whole lot of this going on anymore. I mean it's just poorly written too. Not everyone in these industries has sold their souls. Not everyone in these industries has given over their children to pedos, et cetera, et cetera. Well, like I didn't say any of that stuff, but I mean, certainly Will's um, son has gone through his own things. Remember when he went through his period where he was wearing dresses? I mean, there's levels of humiliation that happen in the Hollywood world. Like this whole thing has come about because of this humiliation ritual that Will Smith is going through now, right? Um, but to get into a club, that's what you have to do. All right, let's get back to the comment here. I got to find it and um, here we go. So, um, <laughs> and then it says, in around 2044, it was easy to see that this is not Will's voice in a female tone, that the voice was overlaid and even mildly intelligent person could easily discern that. Um, this is the segment. Of course, I knew that. Everyone knows it, right? that Will Smith wasn't able to produce that voice. <laughs> if you saw the clip, Will Smith is talking about becoming the Fresh Prince and meeting Benny Medina. And then he, he you know, he's moving, moving his lips, but there's a woman's voice pretending to be his girlfriend, in air quotes, telling him to go to the Arsenio, show, uh, the Arsenio Hall show and hang out and try to figure out because he is, you know, broken or the tax IRS took all of his stuff and his career was over. And that's when he met Benny Medina, who was, again, an openly gay man who was accused of assaulting a couple of assault cases, right? Who was the real fresh, there was the real fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which I discuss, you know, you see the, the video. I mean, this is just all a ton of it. <laughs> the person says, I, I highly recommend you and everyone else before you go bashing this man any further, you need to see this, a Smith family therapy ses session, a best shape of my life. This is where he says he's a complete fraud. You should also watch Will talk about what all he did, the reasons behind all what he did concerning Jada's 40th birthday party, right? <laughs> and only for her to tell him it was just one of his ego stunts Jada is very toxic, right? <laughs> That's what, she has toxic, does she have toxic masculinity? She has hatred for Will, right? <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, Will is not a good person, right? Will is, um, this person's a Will Smith fan, right? So my crazy conspiracy theory about Will Smith being closeted homosexual and a fraud, right? Really, it's a fraud. These things are all part of it. That Will Smith is a fraud. That's me just coming up with wild theories, right? That's with just me doing this for clickbait and 
feeding into it. But you're but you're saying Jade is the problem and the toxic one. That's completely rational. And I mean, you, so you don't really, <laughs> like I. <laughs> she has hatred for Will. Seems like people just want to destroy him at every turn, and believe that it has much to do with what Will is a general happy go lucky person that just ends up slapping dudes for no reason, right? I mean, according to the narrative, why do people want to destroy Will? I mean, I haven't seen that at all, right? I haven't seen people want to destroy him. He has, you know, been given the good guy narrative. He has had lucrative movie career, and, you know, which faded away, but he's still making some, he was still making some movies. And, you know, that crappy rap, I mean, he's a horrible rapper, and he made lots of money doing both of those things. His kids are successful. I mean, he has a sham marriage. He could divorce Jada, right? I mean, at least it's a cock. Like, you know, <laughs> he got cocked by his son's friend, right? August Asina and Jade and their friends. They hung out and they started to hang out with the Smith family. And Jada took a liking to him. And Will agreed to allow Jada to go bang his um, son's friend. I mean, this is all weird behavior, right? Imagine a situation where one of your kids brings home uh, a guy and you're in a married relationship as a father and a husband and your wife takes a, a liking to your friend's son and you say, oh, go ahead. Go have a two-year affair. We'll go on vacations together. You guys can go sleep in your own room and I'll sleep in mine, right? And we'll just pretend we're married and, I mean, all these things. Like they were hanging out. Uh, you know, they were going to places... I mean, they were going to award ceremonies and things together, right? And so, and the whole family just accepted it, right? Like, the, how did Jaden feel about that? His friend coming over and banging his mom, right? So, like, you know, these are all odd behaviors, and Will is definitely the dominant figure. He's the one that forces everything in these, you know, narratives and the way that he, you know, conducts himself in these YouTube videos and all this social media stuff. Jada is very toxic. She has hatred for Will. Seems like people just want to destroy him at every turn and believe that has much, much to do with that Will is a generally happy, good, lucky person. There are so many people in the world, this is where it gets capitalized, so many people in this world that cannot just stand to see a happy person. <laughs> Will is not a happy person. Like, it's a fake laugh. It's a fake laugh. Like, you, you don't know that that's a fake laugh. Anyways, especially if they have a happy-go-lucky person that will want to bring them down and beat them down as much as possible. See, this person admitted to that they watched Will's, um, you know, the the show where he's losing the best shape of his life. And that's where he confesses that he's a carefully constructed character. He's not really happy. You can see he's not happy. He's a miserable person, right? I mean, he's, um, you know, and he's domineering and controlling. Like he puts on a character, which he admits to, in front of the cameras. And so this person says, to bring them down and beat them down, keep them down as much as they possibly can. I know this very, very well. I've had this done to me my entire life, too. That was all in capital letters. And then, jealousy is a sick, evil bastard of a beast. <laughs> so here they've, you know, denied all these weird behaviors by Will. Like, at least saying, all right, you know, maybe you have a point. Like, yeah, this seems kind of weird like these are all weird behaviors and this isn't you know they're, they're only watching 20 minutes of all the evidence I present right of Will acting in you know weird ways and the dysfunction and you know all of it I mean it's there and I've added another half hour that they haven't even seen I mean if they watch my other videos and there's more evidence coming out all the time and Will, is, Will Smith himself has admitted he's a fraud but their diagnosis for this is jealousy. Is je I'm jelly. I'm jelly of Will Smith. That's why I'm making these videos. That's why people are watching them. Because we're all jealous of Will Smith. That's what motivates us. Like Will Smith is successful and he's happy-go-lucky and he's a wonderful person with a, a toxic wife and everyone's just trying to take him down and he's just walking, you know, skipping through life, happy-go-lucky, grabbing other dudes' tushes and... <laughs> Make it out with his son. I mean, he's just, he's just happy, and he's just trying to spread the joy. <laughs> Jealousy is a sick, evil bastard of a beast. I've had enough of watching this video, for I know it's just going to be more of turning things into fake narratives. I think highly prob probably 
prob- probably probability you are getting paid to do this and or are wanting to capitalize on the heat of the moment that being the Oscar event between Chris Rock and Will. This is all the time I'm willing to give to this. <laughs> it's more than enough. <laughs> Thanks. It was more than enough. That was an absolute spectacular comment, right? And the denial, like this is the, you know, the level of denial people have because they could just turn the video off and walked away, right? But they had to say something because, you know, it's some part of them is realizing Will Smith isn't the man they thought he was and whatever attachment they have to him, right? Because I don't care. Like I, you know, I cover people, whatever. And it comes and it goes. I mean, yeah, there's a there's a a monetary element involved, which I'm, you know, I'm not trying to hide that. I wouldn't make celebrity videos if it wasn't financially beneficial. Like I don't make celebrity videos for free. <laughs> like I don't care about it. Like I'm not, this is not, some, you know, I have some personal stake in it. And so, you know, whatever the truth is, is the truth. But certainly Will Smith isn't telling the truth. He's admitted that. He's created a, you know, a, I mean, you can watch the video or any of them. I put it, I put that in a number of videos where he says that he's a carefully constructed character. And so, you know, he's admitting that he's a fraud and he's just put on a public persona and brand like all these people do in Hollywood. And Will Smith seems to you know, the truth of what he really is and his image are the, you know, one of the biggest gaps. I mean, a town full of frauds, Will Smith has, you know, I mean, he's the king, right? And that's, you know, I mean, that's there for anybody to see, but not Will Smith fans who are desperately trying to cling to this idea that he's happy-go-lucky and his toxic wife and all of humanity are trying to take this great man down, you know? <laughs> And make, you know, profit with their jealousy on clickbait videos. And then, you know, leave a two-page comment, right? <laughs> Trying to normalize weird-ass behaviors. So I went and ate breakfast, and um, I had some more thoughts. I was talking to my wife about it, because I hadn't read the whole comment. I told her about the comment last night. <laughs> and how much I was looking forward to this. Um, you know, <laughs> which is... All you need to know about me in these videos. Uh, but I want to play this because it's, you know, the important piece to this person's um, denial, right? So this is Will Smith and something that she watched, right? This is just from the trailer of um, Best Shape of My Life. And she's talked about the therapy session here. She talked about, you know... Um, a lot of, you know, what happened in this show, she watched the whole show. She's a Will Smith fan. I watched the trailer, right? And, well, let's just watch this thing here. That was the only time in my life that I ever considered suicide. Now I'm about to show the world how little I know about myself. How little I know about myself. This is just a few years ago, right? like last year. I don't want to do any of this. I'm finished with the best shape of my life. What you've come to understand as Will Smith, the alien annihilating MC, the bigger than life movie star, is largely a construction, a carefully crafted and honed character designed to protect myself, to hide myself from the world to hide the coward. A carefully constructed character, right? That first he said he doesn't even know his himself, like he doesn't know anything about him because he's just been faking it so long. And he's a carefully constructed character to hide what he called the coward. Um, so this person, you know, got duped by his character, right? Because this person, he's just told you because she's watched this that everything that you know about him is a fraud. And it's coming out, like his marriage, you know, all these things he's pitched out there. And he's not fooling me, like he's doesn't done anything to me because I'm not his fan. I don't, you know, I don't care. I mean, they all lie, right? They're all liars. I mean, everybody lies. It hasn't affected me, but this person's invested in Will Smith, so much so she left, a, you know, a two-page comment 
<laughs> defending his very odd and weird behaviors. But he's just told you, she's, he's told you over and over again, I mean, in this, you know, in so many different ways, but then he just blatantly came out and said, a carefully constructed character. It's not a real person. It's a character. This thing that you've come to know as Will Smith is a character. It's not me. I don't even know who I am. Doesn't know what love is, right? I cover that. And everything from his marriage to him being a father and him imposing himself and always wanting to be the center of attention and push this character out there. He created a whole YouTube channel, you know, and he was flaunting his wealth and success, right? Like he, you know, on his 46th, 50th, 60th birthday, whatever it was, right? He um, bungee jumped into the Grand Canyon on a helicopter. You can't get a helicopter anywhere near the Grand Canyon, right? Like, you know, there's 20,000 people want to see, you know, nature or whatever. That's like mobbed, especially, you know, the, the south um, the south side and the north side's different. It's higher and it's interesting. Um, but there's, you know, he, he got to bungee jumped into the Grand Canyon, right? Like as a way to, I mean, they loved it for publicity, but for him, you know, why the Grand Canyon? Like, why does it have to be that? Like, why does it have to be, you know, bigger and better than just a regular bungee jump that you do off a bridge like everyone else, right? And why are you bungee jumping anyway? Well, he said, you know, his whole YouTube channel was him confronting his fears, going scuba diving. You know, he went to all these exotic places, right? And he's showing you how great his life is and all the things he gets, you know, all his perks as a celebrity. And yet you see he's got no love. His wife hates him, you know. I mean, I don't know about his kids, but, you know, it's all just a sham, right? He's always forcing himself to be the center of attention. And this commenter said that if you watch the therapy session, he talks about how much he did for Jada's 40th birthday, and she didn't appreciate it. It's her birthday. Like, she, you know, and she said, and he admitted to it, that he did it for himself, that it was just another way to display his ego. No matter how big the party is, like, she was looked at him at that moment, and she hated him. Because it's all about him and not her. Like even on her birthday, you know, it was like when Homer Simpson gave Marge a bowling ball with the with the name Homer on it, right? <laughs> like, you know, it's all about him, his narcissism, his brand, his everything. It's all consuming. And the people around him aren't digging it. And, you know, I mean, he's not this guy that he pretends to be. And you fell for it. Like you fell for it. He duped you. You're the one who's upset. You, you know, his, his whatever demise here. But he's, you know, self sabotaging in such an extent and all the things that he's, you know, done. I mean, Illuminati stuff, you know, humiliation stuff and all the rest of it, right? That this person can only make it through 20 minutes of my video and then had to, you know, disparage me as, a, as, a, as being jealous, right? Because that could be the only explanation for Will Smith's depravity and his, you know, weird behaviors and everything else that I'm just profiting off of you know, lies and, and his, and his multiple weird, you know, interaction behaviors and his admitting that he's just a character. <laughs> like he's just telling you, he's telling you he's a character that he doesn't even know who the real Will Smith is. Like he doesn't know anything about himself and you know, even less cause it's a character and you're still like, no, it isn't. No, it's not Jada. Jada's the toxic one. Right? <laughs> and so um, that's why that's just a platinum comment. So anyways, my wife and I watched um, Pam and Tommy Lee. And, like, it was on Hulu and, you know, they build the trailer as sort of a, as a comedy, right? And we watched the first episode. It wasn't really funny. Seth Rogen, to me, is annoying. Um, and, you know, really not, I don't know. We were talking about not watching the rest of it. But we stuck with it. And, you know, I'm kind of glad we did. Like, I'm not recommending, I don't recommend things in general, but... It wasn't uh, like I'd never watch it again, right? <laughs> it was, you know, sort of well-made. And I don't know how much it was true. I'm sure it's based in some, you know, version of reality. Um, but clearly, it was, it was about the sex tape. And it was about, you know, um, uh, how, you know, spoiler alert, I'm not, you know, I'm going to talk about whatever, you know, various things. But Seth Rogen character is a is a carpenter who Tommy Lee stiffed, right? Didn't pay him for his work and fired him. And when he tried to get his tools back, Tommy Lee confronted him with a gun and stole his tools, right? And this is apparently the official story in terms of mainstream media. I just looked it up on Yahoo. 
And so this is the actual story. And so the guy went in and stole the safe because he had, he was an electrician who put in the security cameras and things. And he got the sex tape, which he sold for $175, which was released. And, you know, the movie is, goes on in a different direction, right? Um, but the guy, um, this really happened because Tommy Lee was a dick, right? You know, Rich, you know, was Motley Crue, right? <laughs> and um, the way he's portrayed in the movie and the way that this is written, you know, he stiffed a hardworking person who got revenge and released the tape. And it set off a whole uh, level of, like, internet, you know, phenomena, right? Because the internet was just coming up, and sex on the internet and all these things that we see now, the porn and all these things. The tape generated $181 million in revenue, like a fifth of a, almost $200 million, right? Almost a fifth of a billion dollars. And so, and they had Tommy Lee and... and uh, Pam Anderson didn't get any of it. But what was interesting about it, like it's like sort of a historical event of depravity, right? And nobody's likable. <laughs> they try to make Pamela Anderson a victim, right? She was just about to release that um, horrible movie, Bob Barb Wire. I never seen anything from it, but just the pictures, I knew it would suck. And so we paused the movie and I got a clip on YouTube of Barb Wire my wife and I watched it and, you know, it was, it was laughable. Like she wasn't a good actress and they tried to make her a victim and how, you know, there's a scene where the guy who stole the tape, this guy Rand is going to his porn star girlfriend's house, or his ex-wife is a porn star and apologizing for being a man. Like, you know, and she says, yeah, you guys aren't the better gender. And so there's a lot of that, like, you know, that's always in stuff now where, you know, it's all about demonizing men and how men, you know, Tommy Lee was always screwing up and Pam was having to suffer for it. So there's that element, which kind of sucks, right? Because it's a contrived narrative that they're pushing out there about how bad men are to women and how toxic they are, you know, and that's a, a recurring theme in the show. But if you get past that, you know, it's the depravity and just how like horrible people are, right? And you see this a lot in TV shows now and movies where there's no real heroes. Like everybody sucks on some level. There's not really anybody to root for. You know, it's more realistic, so I guess it's good in that way more than the, the fake narratives where there's a distinctive hero and a distinctive villain, you know, and that's not really how life is. But that's how the movies present things, where there's somebody to root for and somebody to root against. In these reality TV shows, there's always a villain and you know, they always construct these narratives and, you know, they warp the narrative to whatever way, you know, to make it, you know, to where there's a, a distinctive roles, right? But like with this, this is just the Hollywood depravity. They're all mil miserable, selfish people who are stupid and self-destructive, right? Each person was self-destructive in the show. But also it, you know, documented like the internet going over to the dark side in a sense, right? Because, you know, it was used to to sell this sex tape, which became, you know, later on the Kardashians. I mean, all this stuff. Like you think about you know, all the negativity and all the ickiness has come out of, you know, that um, the celebrity sex tape sort of, you know, um, genre of entertainment. I don't even know what you would call it, right? Porn or whatever it is. And just how the internet has kind of turned out. Like it could have been used for something like great. You know, one third of the internet's like porn. You know, it's just like all of it. And they play a lot of 90s music. And I remembered how bad the 90s were. It was just this, um, you know, it's when the Internet was taking off and there was a financial boom, The you know, the Internet bubble. And, you know, it was just uh, the 80s through the 90s, just the clothing and the music and just how people were. It was like a, like a, you know, some sort of a, you know, so superficial and so, um, like, narcissistic and immature and just all of it, right? The haircuts, I mean, it, you know, like, the 90s was just, uh, I mean, it was like almost a bad joke. You know, I knew pretty much nothing about this because I didn't have a TV for a lot of this time. And I wasn't on the Internet for years. I didn't get on the Internet till 2004 or five or something like this, three, four, five, something. I think 2003. 
was the first time I I used like a I was on the internet. And so for me, like I missed all of this. Like I didn't know these things happened. I never really, you know, listened to any Motley Crue music, didn't like them, all those hair bands. I mean, the hair bands were just brutal. And, you know, the music wasn't good. And um, so I barely knew who Tommy Lee was. I think I might have watched a total of like five minutes of Baywatch. You know, something where I'd be flipping through the channels and I'd stop because the show sucked so bad and watched a minute or two like I do now, but, you know, then move on. And so I really didn't know much about Pam Anderson and then nothing about this story and the sex tape and all these things. Like I knew they existed, but then seeing like all the things in the internet and all of it sort of in the the 90s and all of it come together, like it wasn't fun to watch. I was glad when it was over, you know, but I was unconscious to a large extent during that period of time. Like I wasn't necessarily happy, but I wasn't aware like I am now. And it would have been excruciating for me to be like I am now, living through the 90s. Because then the end wasn't in sight. Like the end of our civilization where, you know, as far as anybody was concerned, our economy was strong. You know, the big event, 2001, hadn't happened. The big, you know, other events hadn't happened. And, you know, it could go on like this forever. And it was going in the worst possible direction, right? Even though the internet was going to be you know, the cell phones and the internet, all these things were coming up, they weren't going to make life better. And so, you know, it was not a great time then. Like we think about what's going on now. Every day there's a, like a bummer of a story about how human beings suck, right? Like, I mean, it's not one story, it's multiple stories. And then there's, you know, the whole like COVID thing that's, that goes on, you know, the whole stuff now with the Ukraine, that's a big story that goes on for a long period of time, right? The Trump dramas, you know, the media being obsessed with Trump and, you know, Trump. Um, I mean, same thing like I was saying with Will Smith. You know, when you go out and you sell your family as being something great, it's like he's flaunting his success, right? He's flaunting all of his artificial success as, a, you know, rich, you know, famous um, musician or whatever, right, rapper and uh, actor, right? And he sucks at both of them, but, you know. He made a lot of money. He was the number one celebrity for a while, at least in terms of acting. And, you know, he had this family, and his family was successful as well. And they all had their own personal success. And then they had, you know, this lifestyle that he has, and he flaunts it, right? And people are going to get bummed out when you flaunt things like that. And when it turns out that everything that you say is a sham and you're a carefully created character, right? You know, it's the same thing for... Donald J. Trump. I mean, the guy, you know, I enjoyed him as a president. He's my favorite president, just as a character in a show. And part of it was the way he pissed people off. But they were, you know, right to be pissed off at him because he just flaunted things, right? He just threw things in his in their face. I mean, if you ever watched the Trump show, The Apprentice, I mean, there's a great scene where they go up to his gaudy uh, uh, condo or one of his, you know, where he lives, and everything's made out of gold. He has a gold, gold toilet seat, right? A whole gold toilet. The whole toilet's made out of gold, right? So he's got things like this. And they go to his gaudy, I mean, his gaudy buildings and, you know, off the charts, you know, fake bling and, you know, not fake bling, but real bling, but just weird and, you know, inappropriate. And they go into his apartment, and one of the women says to Melania, oh, you're so lucky to live here, right? Because it's all this, you know... Um, this flashy, wealthy kind of, you know, extravagant stuff, but it's kind of like poor taste and just, you know, somebody somebody who's poor got rich and just buys stuff without knowing what they're buying. But she says, oh, you're so lucky. And Melania goes, he's not lucky. <laughs> and so, um, but if you've seen all of his gaudy and all of his, you know, the Trump stuff, and um, it's not like elegant, it's, you know, it's in your face wealth and ex, ex, you know exploitation you know it's a lot of a, a sort of a flim flam and you know a show where it's just he's putting it out there to validate himself like in the same way Will Smith is and that's going to cause people to not like you right not even just out of a sense of jealousy but just out of a sense of fakeness right it doesn't mean that you 
are doing what you're supposed to do, or more importantly, becoming what you're supposed to become, right? Like you're just bathing in the material success. There's a, you know, an ancient like Indian story where these two divine beings, um, you know, the soul that later becomes Krishna has this, you know, companion who's the human side. There's, there's, uh, yeah, I've talked about this before. And they're going around and, you know, this um, divine soul is explaining to the egotistical soul what's going on. And there's an emperor who is praying for more wealth and more kingdoms and whatever it is, right? Conquering more people. And he grants him, this divine being grants him his wishes. And the emperor wins the war and, you know, becomes richer. And then there's this saint who all he has is a cow. And he's, you know, milking the cow and... You know, it's his only like sort of companion and and the cow gets sick and he's praying because, you know, that's all he has that the cow survive. And this divine being kills the cow, right? He takes the soul of the cow and this, you know, the, the egotistical soul goes, what are you doing? You, this emperor is an evil man and he prayed to you. You give him his, you know, whatever, right? Whatever he wants. And the saint who's just, you know, the best kind of a person has one thing and you take it away. And he says, well. The emperor isn't going to come to God for many lives, right? So he's just, you know, got to go and experience these things and experience them as not being good for him and not real. You know, but the only thing that's separating this saint from God is this cow, right? The cow is, you know, separating him from being completely dependent on God. And so, you know, that's why that happened. And, you know, there's you're becoming something here spiritually, and being rich and famous isn't something that helps that, right? It's a distraction, and often you engage in behaviors that are going to just delay you and you get off your spiritual path. And so all these people who flaunt all this stuff and fake it and all the, you know, our society structured in this way to, to make you more materialistic and take you away from God and your connection to God, and all these people are playing a role in it. They're pretending to be something and pretending that it's great when it isn't, right? They're pretending that it's you know, it's, it's worth it. And it's, you know, it's somehow really the goal of life. And it isn't like all these people are miserable and they're not going in the right direction. Maybe they have to do this before they, you know, ascend to a spiritual life, but it's just, they're not even on it. Like they're not even at the beginning point yet. Right. They have to like, you know, throw off the shackles of their materialism and their selfishness and then embrace their soul's path. And they're not there yet. They're not even in the you, know, you haven't even taken the first step onto the spiritual path, and yet they're considered, you know, people that you look up to, like iconic and, you know, people that you look up to as in for inspiration and heroes and things, and like this commenter, you know, and completely lost because they suck and you're just wishing you could suck as bad as them, right? <laughs> Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely reporting for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day. And be grateful.